This is Twit. Um, I have one bit of miscellany, which is happy. Last Thursday, NASA updated the world with the news of the status of our intrepid Voyager 1 spacecraft. The headline of NASA's posting was, Engineers Pinpoint Cause of Voyager 1 Issue Are Working on Solution. They explained, quote, Engineers have confirmed that a small portion of corrupted memory in one of the computers aboard NASA's Voyager 1 has been causing the spacecraft to send unreadable science and engineering data to Earth since last November. Called the Flight Data Subsystem, FDS, the computers responsible for packaging the probe's science and engineering data before the telemetry modulation unit, the TMU, and radio transmitter send the data to Earth. In early March, the team issued a poke command to prompt the spacecraft to send back a readout <laughs> of the FDS memory. Is that a they Facebook poke it. command? <laughs> they poked it. That's 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 similar to a like, but a, but it dates from 1971, so it's yeah, not quite right. the same. The original poke. That's right, <laughs> which includes the company's software code as well as variables that are all being sent back. The, 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 the computer's software code as well as variables. Wow. Using the readout that they received, the team has confirmed that about 3% of the FDS memory has been corrupted, pre- preventing the computer from carrying out normal operations. The team suspects that a single chip responsible for storing part of the affected portion of the FDS memory is not working. Mm. Engineers cannot determine with certainty what caused the issue. Two possibilities are that the chip could have been hit by an energetic particle from space or that it simply may have worn out (laughs) over 40, 46 years. I understand that. Just like the rest of us. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) I I understand that completely. (laughs) Although it may take weeks or months, engineers are optimistic. They can find a way for the FDS to operate normally again without the unusable memory hardware which would enable Voyager 1 to begin returning science and engineering data. What a miraculous story. Leo, it is astonishing. Isn't and it? And when you consider, what, what is it? Is it billions or millions of miles away? It, it is astonishingly far away. How can that thing be pointing at <laughs> Earth? I mean, talk about... I mean, it, it, it's a fraction of a degree I, at that distance for its antenna, a, a directional dish, to still be perfectly aligned. To me, that's what is stunning. Amazing. Yeah. And, and they, they don't have enough power to send a broad beam. It's got to be a fairly tight beam. So right. and amazing. The, I mean, the power is dropping as as we've covered through the years. They're using a radioisotope based system. Basically, the, the the decaying radioisotopes are heating a thermocouple, which is generating the power <laughs> to drive this stuff. <laughs> And they've had over time as as less and less radiation is being produced because it's just you no, know, it's just winding down. The power produced has diminished, so they've been having to judiciously turn off successive instruments of their total instrument package in or because they're 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 looking at the total number of watts being generated. Uh, it, it's just astonishing. It is 15 billion miles. That's insane. From Earth. It is incredible. Insane. 46 15. years, 7 months, 4 days, 9 hours, 4 minutes and 23 billion. seconds. 15 billion. That is insane. I, I I almost feel like that can't be right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 how can it still be pointing yes. with enough accuracy at us? That's mind blowing to me. Twenty two hours and twenty two and a half hours light light distance uh, away. That's uh, yeah. how did it happen? 
Oh, and, 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 and there you just scroll by the instruments, which are now on and off on, on oh, both yeah, of the status. devices. Yeah. So one right. is the first column. Plasma science is off. Imaging science is off. Infrared, infrared, interferometer spectrometer is off. Quite a bit. But there's still four yeah. science projects still on. Yep. Cosmic rays, low energy charge particles, and magnetometer. Wow. Oh, and plasma wave yeah. subsystem. Still on. Yeah. And actually, we, we learned that when Voyager 1 passed out of the heliosphere, the 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 models which we had which cosmologists and astronomers had made were found to be wrong so it was never expected to be anything other than a flyby uh, some of our planets to take some pictures but it just wouldn't die so it kept on going and it had so much useful instrumentation on it that they're learning new things still which are still valuable Patrick said, wait a minute, it's getting it's getting closer to the Earth? Yeah, because the Earth's rotating in its direction right now. The distance from the sun is going up. It's 15.1 billion miles from the sun, or 163 astro astronomical units. So that means that it's moving away from, uh, away from the sun more slowly than right. the Earth is currently moving right. around and, and thus toward it at the moment. It's gaining. And then, of course, as the Earth you know, processes, it will go the other right. way. And uh, it'll gain faster. So, and there's only now one radio telescope in Australia which is able to to talk to it. And unfortunately, it's tasked with doing lots of other things. So they need to like steal a little bit of time at the right moment when they're able to send a burst of instructions to it. And then they wait 44 hours for 22 for it to go out and 22. I mean, and Leo, the other thing. Think of the science we had in 71. Oh, you know, yeah. Th that's when I had my first car where they had an empty engine compartment because there was an <laughs> engine and, and, and a gas line going to a, to a carburetor. I mean, there was no, ta and you had a throttle. I had to pull the throttle to start the engine when it was cold. Oh, in the, the choke. Morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the choke. Yeah. The choke, not yeah. the throttle. Right, yeah. the, the choke. Yeah. I mean, that was the world in 71 where where Wozniak was saying, Steve, I think I can get rid of one more <laughs> Apple computer because, you know, we need the space. Look at this where it is. Way the hell out there. Way beyond anything else. The farthest man-made object in the world, in the uh, universe. Unless there's other men elsewhere, but we don't know that. So, Yeah, I don't know where that Tesla coupe is at the moment. I don't... <laughs> a lot closer, I can promise yeah, you. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> wow. Just a great story. It's such a great story. And again, story. 1971 technology. Uh, it's just astonishing. Well, but think, I mean, in 1969, we landed on the moon two years before that. And we're having a hard, a devil of a time doing it again. So maybe maybe those guys back in the 60s knew something. Yeah, the bits were bigger. And so they were more <laughs> robust back then. What you want is bigger bits, really. <laughs> yeah, our bits have gotten way too small. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below.